Hello everyone. Do you struggle in the writing section? Well, we have got you covered. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you how to write letters in general writing task one. In today's video, you will learn the different types of letters. Next, we will see the language to be used for the same. Then we will understand the band eight structure for the letters. And at the end, we will see different sample letters so that you get a better idea of how to write the letters. If you find our videos useful, make sure that you give it a thumbs up, share our videos and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on the awesome lessons we have in store for you. This is your IELTS expert, Sakshi. Now it's time to practice the letters. Are you ready? Let's dive in. So there are three types of letters. Formal, semi-formal and informal. It is very important to identify the type of letter so that you use the correct structure and language. Now let's start with the formal letter. You write it to someone whom you have not seen or met. You do not know them by their first or last name. Usually it is addressed to a private or public institution. For example, it could be the editor of a newspaper or municipal counselor. Next, let's have a look at the semi-formal letter. You write it to someone whom you know officially. You know them by their first or last name. They're not your friends, yet there is some kind of official relationship. For example, it could be the landlord or it could be your hostel warden. Next, informal. You write it to someone whom you know personally. Usually they are your friends and family members. There's specific kind of language to be used for these three letters. Let's understand. Your formal language looks like this. I require your assistance to purchase a diamond jewelry for my wife. In semi-formal letter, it would look like, I need your help in buying a diamond jewelry for my wife. Did you notice any difference? So we have used the synonyms of require, assistance and purchase, right? But in semi-formal letter, it looks like this. Need, help and buying, all right? Now let's see informal language. How about hopping along with me to the jewelry shop and helping me to select a piece of diamond jewelry for my wife? Now you could see this kind of language is usually used with friends. Another thing to keep in mind is the use of contractions. You can use the short form or the contractions in informal and semi-formal letters, but do not use them in formal letters. For example, you can write, I'll come. Right? It's a contracted form. You can use that in informal and semi-formal. But when it comes to formal letters, you should write the full form that is I will come. All right. There's also a difference in the way you open the letter and close it. It differs for formal, semi-formal and informal letter. So how do we write that? For formal letter, you will begin with dear sir or madam. All right. And your sign off would look like this, yours faithfully. For semi-formal, as I said, you know them by their first or last name. So you can include either of them and you can write yours sincerely to sign off. For informal, you can directly write the first name of your friend. And you can write best regards and warm wishes to close the letter. There are some useful opening lines that you can use to get a better band score in letter writing. So for formal letter, you can use the following lines. For informal, you can open your letter using these lines. Let's start with the formal letter. We are going to understand the right structure for the letters and also understand it better through sample answers. Let's begin with the formal letter. As I said, it is usually written to some private or public institution. So the opening sentence would begin with dear sir or madam and you close it with yours faithfully. Now the various examples could be maybe you're writing to manager of the bank or someone at the insurance company, airline, local council. It could be anything. Let's see one question and see how we can actually write a letter. Recently, you saw an article in a newspaper or journal about a city, a town you know. And some of the information in the article was incorrect. We are writing a letter to the editor. Okay. Now, in your letter, you should tell 
Now, see, in your question, they will always give you the bullet points. How you know about the city or town? What information was incorrect? What editor should do about this? It is very important to cover all these bullet points. Let's see how we can write the structure step by step. So you begin with the opening salutation that is dear sir or madam for formal letter. You're going to divide it into four paragraphs. You will begin with the purpose of the letter. You are going to mention the reason why you're writing the letter to someone. Then your subsequent paragraphs will cover each of the bullet points. So you are going to talk about the first bullet point with the relevant details in your next paragraph, followed by two more paragraphs touching upon the second and the third bullet point respectively. There's going to be a closing sentence which can look like this. I look forward to hearing from you and ending it with a sign off, yours faithfully, and you can write your name. Do not write XYZ or ABC, it doesn't look good. So you can write any name. Now that we have understood the structure, let's see how we can apply it in the letter. So we have started with the salutation, dear sir or madam, all right? Next, we are writing the purpose of the letter. I'm writing this letter to you regarding an article named Bangalorites published in your newspaper on February 2nd, 2021, all right? So here you have expressed the purpose of the letter clearly. Now you are going to talk about the first bullet point. So let's see how we are covering it. I'm a resident of Bangalore and have been residing in Jayanagar for the past 20 years. After finishing my studies at Jain College, I grabbed a job in one of the local companies. Thus, I can say that I know Bangalore pretty well, especially the Jayanagar area. We have covered the first bullet point. Now let's talk about the second bullet point. In the article that was published last week, you mentioned that there is an array of attractions and facilities in the area. While most of the details were accurate and efficient for newcomers and old residents, you mentioned that the rooftop cafe is located in the ninth block. In reality, it is in the fourth block. Now we are done with the second bullet point. Now let's cover the last bullet point in the last paragraph. Since your newspaper is quite followed and people read it daily, providing inaccurate information may mislead people. It may also impact your reputation. To correct this goof up, you may write a separate article on the rooftop cafe and talk about its correct address. Now let's see how we close the letter. I look forward to hearing from you. Yours faithfully, Sakshi. So it's so easy. If you just follow these steps one by one, you can easily write a letter very coherently. Now this was the formal letter. So you can also see the kind of vocabulary that we have used. So instead of saying have been living in Jainagar, we have used residing, right? And you can see some good lexical resources here an array of attractions, right? The details were accurate and efficient, right? Or you could say inaccurate information may mislead people, right? So this is how we write a formal letter. The structure remains the same for the other letters also with the change only in the opening and the closing sentences and the kind of language to be used. Next, coming to semi-formal letters, you write it to someone whom you know, all right? You have met them and you know them by their first or last name. And as we discussed, you will address them by their first or last name. So let's say, dear Mr. Sharma, dear Mrs. Anagha, and close it with your sincerity. It is typically written to, let's say, landlord, employer, your HR manager, librarian, doctor, teacher, school counselor. So let's see how we write the letter. So we again begin with the salutation. Next, we write the explanation, right? That is the purpose of the letter and then elaborate on the three bullet points in three distinct paragraphs, closing it, signing off, and then write your name. As I said, you should make up a name and not write ABC or XYZ. So you can read this question. You can pause the video, go through the questions before we see the sample answer. So this is how your semi-formal letter looks like. You should read it carefully and see how we have implemented the framework that we just discussed. You can pause the video for the same. Next, let's discuss informal letter. 
Now, usually your topics could be maybe you're apologizing for a damage or inconvenience caused. Maybe you're inviting your friend to your place or seeking advice on something or recommending them something. Now, in informal letters, yes, you can use phrasal verbs, slangs and idioms. And definitely you can use contractions, but do not do that in formal and semi-formal letters. The structure remains the same. We'll again begin with the salutation, right? Then the purpose of the letter, followed by the explanation of the three bullet points. Closing sentence, sign off, and then your name. All right, now you can see the opening and the closing sentence will differ for this letter. So this is the question for informal letter. Do give it a look before we see the sample answer. So this is how your sample answer for informal letter looks like. You can see the language differs a little since you are talking to a friend. You can use the contractions and you can see the language used here is a little informal. Now that we have understood the nitty gritties of letter writing, this is what you should examine after you're done with a letter. So let's say you write a 150 words letter. Of course, you can exceed the word limit. That's perfectly fine. But do not write less than 150 words. Following are the things that you should proofread after you're done with your letter writing. Have you written the purpose of the letter carefully? Have you covered all the three points coherently? Are the paragraphs organized properly? Is there clarity between the paragraphs? Have you used the correct vocabulary? What about your grammar? Have we used the correct tense structures? And make sure that you do not make grammatical errors or even punctuation errors in your sentences so that you don't lose code in your grammatical range and accuracy. So that's how you write the different kind of letters. If you want to boost your score in IELTS exam, you need personal attention and guidance from an expert. So make sure that you check our free demo classes so that you get an idea of one-on-one -on -one training that we provide to you before you enroll into our courses. These classes are taken by our expert certified trainers who can really provide you a good roadmap for your preparation. So make sure that you check the link in the description box and book your free demo class today and make sure that you ace your exam in one go. If you follow these steps carefully, you are one step away from acing the writing section. So if you find our videos useful, make sure that you like and share our videos. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you get notified when we come up with new lessons to boost your IELTS preparation. This is your IELTS expert Sakshi signing off. I'll see you very soon with new lesson. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.